Hello and welcome to another Factorio tutorial video. In this one I will go through the nuclear power system with the reactors, heat pipes, uh, fuel cells I've already covered in a previous video. There's a link in the video description of course. Uh, so we'll talk a bit how to set things up, how to uh, how to use the, the heat that we build up and uh, different ways to make uh, larger setups and how to think. And there are useful links and info in the description, uh, so please check it there as well. So we begin with a very small setup, perhaps the smallest one, with one reactor. When we insert uranium fuel cells, you can see the fuel value, and we know that we are uh, it says energy consumption 40 megawatts and if we calculate this then we'll get that one fuel cell will last for 200 seconds exactly and the thing with this is that it's not working like classic steam engine setups where if we're not using the if, we're, if we don't need the power we're not consuming the coal Nuclear is different because it will consume the fuel cell regardless of if you need the, uh, the energy or not. So using nuclear power is best when you have a, probably a quite large base since there are lots of, uh, of uh, research to be done to get to the uh, covert enrichment process and uh, I can find it but you know, the whole uranium and nuclear parts. And you get lots of energy, and so you probably have a quite large base and lots of stuff that needs power as well. So this should be the priority power, so to say. All right, so we have, have it running. And you can see on the right side, the temperature is 612 degrees. Uh, we can disable all these ones <clears throat> and uh, then you can see the temperature is climbing a, a lot faster and then when I hook things back up we'll consume the uh, the heat now it's not really consumed so it will stay within the system and when I say system I refer to heat exchangers um, all the way back to the reactor so that's like the, the heat system if we take the system up here as night as a and think talk about the same thing then we have everything within the uh, nuclear uh, hazard concrete concrete with heat pipes heat exchangers and then then we leave the heat system so every heat exchanger will use 10 megawatts each uh, so four of these per reactor is exactly what you need and then we'll get 40 megawatts of power and these steam turbines now is turbines uh, this one we can't use engines it will be very inefficient inefficient uh, it says 5.8 megawatts it's actually 5.82 if you do the the math and you can see the few fluid consumption when it comes to the steam of course, we pump in water into the heat exchanger and that will give us the steam. It's at 500 degrees, uh, so it's much hotter than the uh, 165 that we have in the steam engines. And if you do the math, uh, four, 40 megawatts and then 5.82, well, then we need seven. There's a useful link in the description with this calculation, so check that. Um, so right now, if we connect everything again, then you can see we're at 958 degrees Celsius right now. Exchangers, they have water, they produce steam, it will end up in these pipes and just consume them. So this is the easy part. This is a very simple part and uh, it's easy to maintain. You can insert from a chest like this. Uh, let's see, do we have here? 
All right, then just a small setup like this. So this inserter will output the empty fuel cells in here. And if we then take these ones in here, it will refill them. So you can have a transport pipe passing by here. Very simple. These ones come from your production and then you send the rest ones back for re... What's it called? Um, reprocessing. Sorry. But the nuclear reactor is quite interesting because if we place one here, then you, on the bottom row down, down here, it says uh, here, neighbor bonus. And that means that if we're just running this on a fuel cell, start running, it will get warmer and we have no neighbor bonus. But as soon as we place another one, right next to it, they have to connect on uh, on three. Uh, on this, uh, the entire side must uh, must connect. Then you can see that all of a sudden we have a hundred percent neighbor bonus. So now if we run this one as well, this has a hundred percent, and this has one hundred percent, and that means that we have eighty megawatts in total with 100% neighbor bonus from each. So this is 40 plus 40 and this is 40 plus 40 which gives us 160 megawatts instead of 80 as you could think. So this is 80 and this is 160. And then we need to think a bit differently because here I can connect all these heat exchangers. You can see there are eight output pipes. Heat pipes are output in eight sides. Well, actually I have three up here and three down here. So we have 12 sides to be more specific. Um, they can be connected directly to e heat exchangers and we have no loss from over this distance, perhaps one degree. Here we need 16 heat exchangers. And then it starts to get quite tricky to uh, to populate the entire area since they are quite large. That's why I put them like this. So we have all these 16 some at some distance and then we use the heat pipes to transfer the heat. So if we check on the right side of the uh, for the temperature, we have a 939 here, 938 35, 31, and then it will lower for every tile. And once we reach lower than 500, then we'll start to get a loss in the system. As I understand it, there is, even though we have 915 degrees here and 926 here, they, they are not having an, they don't have any performance de decrease. So we're still running at full speed, as long as we have above 500. So the heat pipes can be uh, longer than this, of course. Uh, tried two different setups here, and I think they are quite equal. Um, so these are running at 160 megawatts, and uh, we can take a look here. I have lots of uh, radars, <laughs> um, and they were running at 160. I'm actually having slightly bit more usage than I thought I should have. Perhaps it's a rounding thing, I don't know. And once you start to get bigger than this, if you start to have four, then if we insert some of these cells, then we have connected uh, uh, reactors on two sides. So this one is connected to this one and that one. That means that, that all of these have 200% bonus. And what does that give us? That means we have 120 per reactor, I think. 240, so 480 megawatts when you have them like this. 
And then do you need 48 heat exchangers and then you can definitely not place them like this. Then you need to perhaps um, make a row like this and then you build, I don't know, how long they should be. Kind of like this and then you use the heat pipes and you connect them up here and up down here and, and so on. And then you need to run the piping. Something like this and then the turbine. I don't know. Somehow. So let, let's not go deeper than that. Uh, I understand that the most efficient setups, they expand in one direction and you keep them on uh, <coughs> in a rows of two. Uh, so let's see, do we have, can I get some more? And then when you have them arranged like this, then they actually get 300% bonus. Uh, the end pieces, the end ones gets 200% and everyone in the middle get 300%. All right, I think that's pretty much covers the nuclear power system. We already covered the uh, uranium processing and now we covered the energy production. I think it's time to just use up that power and kill some aliens. <laughs> All right, if you have any comments, leave them in the comment section. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.